Welcome back to the Imaginary Gallery. This is TJ, your host. And tonight's discussion is from a viewer's question, which is Lifeless Sky. The question is, why does the narcissist or otherwise cluster B creature hoover when they are in another a relationship and want your help? Well, there are several reasons for this, and I'm going to share some of my own observations as well as reference an article by Zary Ballard. The article's called Narcissistic Partners and the Relationship Agenda, which I will include a link for below. Before diving off into the question, I figured I would start with a little background for those viewers out there who have not heard the term Hoover. Well, we all know that Hoover is the name of a vacuum cleaner and it's been adopted as a term for the narcissistic monster who you've dated and you've been discarded by but then for some miraculous out of the blue reason he or she chooses to try to suck you back in like a hoover like a vacuum cleaner trying to pull you back into their nasty labyrinth of hell so that's what we're referring to any of you who've been involved with such creatures know that everything can just end like that and there's like nothing and all of a sudden one day the hoover occurs where you're summoned by this monster and it leaves you thinking oh my goodness it can leave you thinking a lot of things and chances are the person initiating this hoover knows this so we'll start off with how do these people hoover well, there are many different ways, more than I'll list here, but one would be a text message out of the blue. You haven't heard from this person in months, and all of a sudden, a text comes through. There could be an email. Just a random email appears, or there could be a letter in the mail. Or a card comes in the mail for your birthday or something. Or there could be a phone call, which you may or may not even answer. There could be a voicemail message, or the information could come from somebody else, like somebody you know who happens to have close proximity with the monster may come to you and say, I saw the monster today and he or she is asking about you. All these techniques can be considered hoovers. The most important part of it, though, is they are deliberately subtle. The reason for this is to hide the deception involved. Some examples, which I did take from the article, the type of message you may get through any of those methods mentioned previously could be fake sweetness. You might get, after this horrifying ordeal with this monster who you found out was doing all these awful things behind your back and so on, and then all of a sudden they're gone and months pass, and then one day you get a message of some kind that's just generic and peppy. Hi, how are you? Want to make sure you're okay? Something like that, which sounds innocent enough. Or maybe on a special occasion, like your birthday, Thanksgiving, or some kind of holiday. Or, if you have children or pets, it could be centered around that, such as, Oh, I was really thinking about your dog. Lakeisha, I really miss her. How is she? Which is diverting the attention away from you and focusing on the dog indirectly as a way to get you to respond. Or could be a fake family illness or a self illness. Some of these creatures I've read in many places will claim all of a sudden to have been diagnosed with cancer and they want your support and sympathy. So no matter what they've done in the past, it's all erased and forgiven so you can devote your attentions and sympathies towards their recently diagnosed deadly disease, which is sick because usually it's fake. Also, it could be sex. 
Remember the two of you made lust in such wonderful ways? You might get a message out of the blue saying, I really miss the way that this or that thigh felt when it happened, this and that, da, da, da. And you may think, oh, ooh, and you'll be tempted to respond. Or there could be a flip Hoover, which is when you'll get a message like, out of the blue, did you just drive by my house? Or, did you just text me or call me? Oh, I missed it. So it's like throwing the ball into your court, even though you've done no such thing, and you know you've done no such thing. However, I've experienced the situation where someone in my phone gets called, and I didn't call them, and they're like saying, I'm calling you because you called. And I'm like, uh, so ghosts may be in the machine. But the main point of this tactic is to see if you're going to bite. They're throwing the bait out, checking to see if you'll bite like a fish. Because their goal is to weasel their way back in to your life, even if not in the same way as before, but to at least weasel. And if you respond positively, it gives them the idea that become, you're receptive to their hoover, which builds them points in their retarded brain that they feel they still have a hold on you. And usually it's possible or successful for them because they may have left when they discarded with many things unanswered or unresolved. So you, of course, are just uh, ripe with wounds that never got resolved. And you're thinking, okay, well, now's the chance. I'm getting a phone call for, oh, and you'll be tempted to respond. And that's the whole goal of the Hoover is to get you to respond so this person can find its way in some way back into your life, even if it's just in a slighter incarnation than before. Chances are, if you're going through this type of situation, you may think that whatever you had with this narcissist monster was something real, and the two of you only share. And you may think, with wishful thinking, like the untied ends, you may think that this person should have realized I was right all along and it didn't seem to realize that. Oh, now it's calling again? Maybe it does. Well, you'll be given false hope, which means you may be tempted to say, oh, yes, I'll meet you tomorrow, yes. The problem is that you don't realize is that the creature you're dealing with is not a regular human being. The creature you're dealing with kind of has an addiction to what they call narcissistic supply and you at one time were a regular source of supply. So you fulfilled a specific need this creature had, but down the line you probably got a little too wise and probably figured out a little too much and no longer were as useful as the new source of supply who knows nothing that you know. So these monsters feel the need to start fresh to start over with a brand new. However, you still may have things about you that they value. Like maybe you have an endless supply of alcohol in your refrigerator and they're poor and can't afford it. Or you've got connections to people who are in high places in companies that this person may have interests in. Or any number of things. The Hoover is designed to keep you at least on a back burner, keep you hoping and thinking that maybe you could work things out. And the question we got from the viewer is, why do they hoover when they've got somebody new that they're dating? They have a new source of supply. Well, these people are addicts for supply. They may have a daily source of supply, but guess what? That's never enough for them, regardless of what they tell the supply. Plus, by hoovering the way they're doing it, they are guaranteeing themselves additional supply in case the primary supply doesn't work out, you see? And then, in addition to you, there is more than likely six or seven others in the same position, which, I might add, will never be told about the existence of the others, because these monsters feel that they are in charge, they are in control, and they deserve to have all these sources of supply without any of them knowing about each other. 
they feel that that's their entitlement. And if you or one of them happened to question, uh, well, who's that? It would be, um, that's just a friend. And that's the kind of crap they'll tell you, even though they've got a similar story going with that other person as they have with you. And neither one of you will ever be told about it. This reminds me of a friend I had many years ago, back when the Internet was new, back when we had the dial-up, as they call it. I remember I got it. I had a computer, and I was chatting back and forth with this friend from school, and he had sent me his email address. Well, then one day he sent me a second email address, and back then your email address was tied to your Internet server. So I would see the first one was from AOL.com. The second one was from Microsoft.com or something different, and I asked, like, why do you have emails from these different, and there was a third one. Why do you have three different emails from three different servers? And his answer was, well, I have three different servers because I want to make sure I can get online. So he was like addicted to being online, keeping in mind that in the years prior, we had no such thing. But then it came about and we had that dial-up connection and he evidently loved it. So he had the problems we used to have in the old days where the phone line would go down or somebody would call and you didn't have your stuff set up right or whatever the case and maybe the network went down well he wanted to have not just one other option but two other options was well, the same mentality for the cluster B monster they want as many sources of supply as possible and then you may question well it's been six months I haven't heard from this monster and all, now all of a sudden I'm getting this message why now what's going on now well, there are many different reasons for this. One of them could be that things are not going in this person's favor with their new or latest supply that they left you for, for example, which, of course, you won't be told that was done. It could be that the new supply did something bad or wrong and the narcissist monster is about to blow this one off or perhaps maybe needs you to create a feeling of jealousy or the new lover is getting close to figuring out what kind of monster they're dealing with much quicker than you did that could be a reason and they know the end is near so they want to keep you on hand it also could be that they need something that you have and that they know that you have don't count though on getting the true story if you do engage in the Hoover because I've noticed, at least in some cases that I've gone through, they're deliberately vague. They don't give you any details about what's really been going on. In fact, many times they'll paint a picture of, because it's natural, you're going to ask, so what have you been doing for the last six months? Well, they're not going to say, I found a replacement for you who is better and didn't know I was evil, so we, we date it. They won't tell you that. They'll probably say something very boring such as I really haven't seen anyone I've just been alone with my family and thinking about things and this is all designed to give you a glimmer of hope that possibly you might be able to get them back into whatever it is you want from them but they will pull these tricks and leave out details and then if you happen to have seen or heard about some other person you may th oh really you've been alone well what about candy cantaloupes I heard that you've been seen with her a lot lately and you'll get some kind of response that will be like oh candy cantaloupes well we're kind of just friends it didn't work out yeah I didn't like the size of her toenails yeah it didn't work and you'll be tempted to think there's hope there's hope if you haven't realized yet what you're dealing with now if you choose to go through with this Hoover, there are some important warnings you must be aware of. You have to realize, first off, this type of person does not have any kind of loyalty. You don't know this necessarily, though, because all you know is what you share between the two of you. You have no idea what it shares with the other fools. So the advice is to expect to pick up where things left off with this Hoover. They're going to edit out anything that's happened since and just expect you just to be like things were before it left 
And also, keep in mind, it's going to leave you or discard you again. And this time, it'll probably be worse than the last time. And you may think that sounds sick and negative, but think about what you're dealing with. It's a demon. It's a monster. And yes, they do want things to be even worse the second or third or fourth time around. And these Hoover techniques are designed to check out your response. See if you do bite. If you don't, they'll try again. That's what they're up to with evil intentions behind it all. In a previous video I had discussed this, which I'll bring up again because it's worth repeating, you to the narcissistic monster are simply an object. You're something they can get things from. And that is what they see you. Your utility. You're not a person with beliefs, ideas, and values. You are a source they can obtain something from. So the comparison I've given before would be like you're the best screwdriver in the world. You get that screw in that hole perfectly and it's perfection every time. However, they set that screwdriver down on their shelf and they find a fancy hammer and they want to use that hammer now. So they leave the screwdriver behind and run off with the hammer, which would be their new supply. But then down the road they realize, oh, I really need a good screwdriver for this. So then the Hoover comes. It could be months, years later. You might be thinking, well, this person's got it, this other person, but you don't know that they've got a hammer and that's all they want. You just think, well, they've got a relationship going. Why are they contacting me? And so you may be tempted to edit out all the bad crap and think of the good stuff that you never resolved and think, well, I'll give this person a chance. Sure, come on over. And then there you are giving yourself over as that perfect screwdriver again. This may lead you to wonder if you've been through such sickness. You may wonder, does this psychopathic, narcissistic, narcopathic, sociopathic monster ever really miss me? Does he or she ever really feel bad for what it actually did? Ruin my life or tried to? Well, guess what the answer is? The answer is... No. This person, you have to remember, has no conscience. This person does know right from wrong. However, doesn't care about it. This person doesn't miss you or love you. This person simply needs you for something you have. And if you do respond to the Hoover and you let this person back in your home and before you know it they're in your bed, doing the stuff you used to do, you may think, oh, he or she missed me. I knew it. Well, guess what? It won't be long before he or she is also missing the source of supply that it abandoned recently to be with you. Because, like the internet guy, they want to have a wide range of options available. And they don't feel that each option need know about the other option. It's they treat each one individually as if it's the only one. And that's the game they play. And if you don't have a conscience, well, you can do this type of thing very easily. Because people with a conscience would crumble and break down halfway through and be like, oh, I can't do this anymore. I've been lying to all of you, but not these people. These people see this as a victory that they've got 20 people at the same time, all begging for their attention, well, that is what you're dealing with, with this type of creature, which hopefully allows you to think it's not so bad that they're gone. In fact, be glad they left voluntarily, and you didn't have to exterminate them. Oh, I miss you so much. I know that I was kind of rude last time. I know that I dumped you again and it really hurt you and I didn't answer any of your calls, but you got to forgive me. This time it's real. Oh, all I could do is think of you and that little yellow blanket you used to love to snuggle up with. 
Please, please give me a chance. I know I said that last time and then left you again. This time it's different. I promise. I know I promised before too, but this promise counts. Ah! You believed all that crap. Maybe now you'll be more careful before you date someone because you were gullible and you fell for every single line I said. In case you didn't know, one of the reasons why I swore to you day and night that there was nobody else was because I am a risk taker. As far as condoms go, those disgusting balloons, if you're gonna put one of those over your rocket, I might as well not even do it because I don't like that. But I knew that if you knew that I was with the whole football team unprotected, and if you knew that I was also with your friends and relatives unprotected, you wouldn't dare put your little rocket inside my Virginia. So I pretended to be devoted to you, and to you only, and you bought it. And as a result, I got the raw bareback love I wanted, and there you go. Plus, my insides were full of so much fluid, <laughs> not just yours. <laughs> you added to the fluid, but oh, it gave me a thrill to go throughout the day, knowing that I might drip a little bit, or drip. A little there and wonder whose it was. Oh. Oh. You asked for it, honey. You got it.